it's Chrissy, your Life Skills and Deployment Educator from Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm here to bring you another stage of your emotional cycles of deployment. We're starting with stage six. So again, these videos are created to um, combine with the global pandemic. That's why we're bringing you on-demand courses. Um, but I want to uh, suggest that you look at the typical stages of deployment and then consider how they might be different considering the global pandemic, how that's different for service members and for family members. Now we have just finished up with cycle five, which is the anticipation of return. So stage six would be the return, which might be the homecoming itself, the one day, the homecoming, and then the renegotiation. So this is where we are in the stages of emotional cycles of development. We are in stage six, return and re renegotiation. Now I will also have a homecoming um, brief that's about homecoming day and then I'll, we'll have a reintegration brief for families, but we have a whole coursework of return and reunion courses that are meant for sailors when coming back from deployment. So let's talk about return and renegotiation. Now, service members and, and family members might have taken a lot of time and focused on that one day, that homecoming day. And that is different than renegotiation. Our research-based evidence shows that the renegotiation, the reintegration process take six weeks on average. So if you feel like things are rocky, they're not quite moving the way you want them to, um, your expectations aren't being met, then um, after a six week period on average, or if you feel very overwhelmed, that is a good time to reach out to Fleet and Family or some, one of our partner organizations for some additional resources with reintegration. Now, I'm gonna talk about how this is different between family members and service members, but realize with the global pandemic, and I've discussed this in previous videos, that the homecoming day and the return will be different. There might not be the ability to have a big homecoming. We might not be having a homecoming celebration on base or on port or at a location at all. This might only be coming back to uh, the service member's home. Or there might even also be a situation where the service member has returned but has to stay in a quarantine area for a period of time. So we might be talking with each other but we might not be able to be in the same physical location for a period of time. So think about how you would want homecoming to look and it's okay to write that down and wish for it, but plan for a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. And realize that there are a lot of ways that you can enjoy being together in your home location or other ways that you can celebrate that don't include face-to-face -face, um, interaction. So be open to those as options. For single service members, um, if you have most of your friends and family in a different location, I have a lot of um, empathy for you. If you are cleared to travel there, then that's great, but you also want to consider um, measures to keep you safe and um, the people around you safe. Um, but realize that it's a good idea to still reach out to them, but consider that it might not be in the way that you anticipate. So be open, um, reach out to your point of contacts, follow the regulations for uh, social distancing, physical distancing, and stay at home orders. So let's talk about how the return and renegotiation looks different for family and for service members. Now, service members, I think sometimes, not all the time, but I think some service members expect for their friends and their family to go in a little Ziploc freezer bag, we're gonna close it up, we'll put it in the freezer, and then we will be gone for nine months or longer, maybe even a year. We come back, we take all those family members and our friends, we defrost them, and we expect things to be the way they were when we left. You have changed and the family has changed. We have had to develop new tasks, we have learned new things, we have developed as human beings, and that is part of the reintegration process is understanding, recognizing it, and celebrating it. And if we don't know how to celebrate it, learning how to accept that change in our friends and in our family members. Now, one of the things that all of us are going to need to learn after the pandemic is to 
communicate um, face to face again to understand physical boundaries, um, pick up on social cues. Not all of us are getting face to face interaction right now. Some of us are getting a lot of it because we live in big household with households with lots of people, but other people are um, alone or are living with just one other person or a couple of other people. But service members and family members will need to relearn what face-to-face -face communication looks like. Now, some service members will say, oh, so much easier now that I can see this person and I can pick up on their social cues. We were having much more miscommunication with uh, just email and phone and letter contact. Um, some people might have the opposite reaction where uh, the service member looks so different, talks so different, or the family members have changed so much, it's difficult. Um, some of you might have uh, watched that show on one of the streaming services um, about couples that meet and get engaged without actually seeing each other. And then once they see each other, uh, it's not out always the way they anticipated that it would be. So uh, consider those, those kind of um, changes and how you may be prepared for them in the future. Our veteran deployers probably know that this is coming and they'll have the skills to uh, figure that out. But it's okay always to just say, you know, this certain mode of communication is just not working or I've, I'm having uh, difficulty because I've been used to communicating with you maybe on email after the children are, are um, asleep and I can tell that the children in the house are used to having my full attention and now they don't or something to the effect. So just be prepared for those changes. Um, family members may at home feel uh, feel very happy, but they might have lost their sense of freedom. So me as a spouse, I'm a military spouse, by the way, I might have had full reign over the remote. I might have been used to having alone time after my kids are asleep. I might have also been used to uh, ordering takeout and not cooking regularly, or um, maybe just not, not cooking at all. We've been having simple meals at home or a lot of kid food. So uh, they'll have a bit of a loss of freedom and I encourage family members to kind of invite the service member back into the daily routines and the daily schedule. That might mean, hey, I'm going to invite you to take out the trash again, something like that. But think of ways that you can say, hey, it would be really helpful to me if, if we could do this together or if you could help me out with this, I would really appreciate it. Find those ways to invite them back in instead of just feeling like you need to do everything frequently. Um, both. People will need to adapt to changes in the home, okay? Um, parents of service members are going to be very proud and they're going to want to have time to gloat and to, um, to really uh, show their appreciation. So be prepared for those long stories, um, for them to ask a lot of questions, for them to maybe not understand that you might need time and space and that um, you might need some time to decompress. So communicate that beforehand. And we are going to be renegotiating roles with our children as well. I remind service members before they go on deployment and while they're on deployment to please parents, but don't discipline from far away. Um, rely on the caregivers that you have left your children with for discipline and you offer support to the caregiver and to the children. Um, but you will need to figure that out coming back. You will need to start getting back in the groove. So ask the caregivers um, about what changes have happened in the home and some ways that you can be helpful with uh, coming back for the children. For family members, I would also, for spouses, mothers, parents, I would suggest don't get into a situation where you are doing everything um, that you did on deployment when the service member comes back home. Get to a point where you have some shared responsibility and invite them to have those, um, those shared responsibilities with the children, with taking care of the home, with other daily tasks that need to be accomplished. Now for the service members, they will need to um, learn how to accept and adjust to changes and to their roles coming back. If you are a service member who was used to coming back and having one of those caveman naps or kind of chilling out in the home and not doing anything for a period of time, that might still be an option, but most of us, some of us are working from home and homeschooling. So be prepared for you, for you to maybe need to take some additional roles if you have multiple children in the house. Or you might have other responsibilities as a single service member that you didn't have before. You came back 
and now you thought you were going to go to this um, shore command and you thought you were going to have this specific job, but that also means that I also have these additional responsibilities because of COVID-19. So be prepared for that as well. It might not be as relaxing as you anticipate or have as you have experienced in past deployments. Um, you might feel like a stranger in your own home or have home feel um, unusual. I have not been an active duty service member, but I have been on ships for a period of time when they are coming back. And I will tell you that I experience some relative unusual feelings of adjustment, just even adjusting to land when I've been on a ship for so long, but also just uh, the noise of children or um, street traffic, uh, the feeling of driving again when I haven't for a period of time. So give yourself a lot of clearance and then realize that there might be a period where you feel really un unstable and um, feel like things are not quite clicking the way you expect them to when returning home. And then for our single service members, you might need to renegotiate your friendships. Um, think about ways that you can reach out to them and connect with them. Their relationships and their friendships will have changed as well. And Friends sometimes have a good way of clicking, but sometimes you might need to have a period of reconnection, like um, someone that you maybe haven't known for a while, you stop following them on social media, and then maybe kind of need to send a friend request again or find a ways to bond. Um, try something that they've enjoyed. Um, I never really liked golf before. It's, I just haven't had the time to do that, but you're really into golf, and maybe I'm going to try golf because that's something that you're into now. So be prepared for those relationships and those friendships to change with time. So that's it for stage six, return and renegotiation. I'll see um, you again for another video on stage seven, the reintegration and stabilization. This is after the period of uncertainty has passed. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again for another video. Should you need any help from us, this is our centralized scheduling number. We are open during the global pandemic. Um, and we are altering our services to meet your needs. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe.